Interpolation means that you want to find a value in between the two closest observed values. We are going to do that with formulas and then with VBA, so you can automatically do it. And then we want an insert that shows us that point. Let's say for point 2, we did not observe point 2, but it's in between these two closest values. The closer they are, the more reliable your interpolation is, and then you want to find the related absorption value. So let me show you first how you can do that with formulas. Let's say this is the value you want to find and then interpolate to the y value. What is the value before point 18? How do you find that? You use the index function, the regular one, and then you select that whole range, including the y values, and then with the match function, I'm going to do the match function right now, you will find that specific value and it will always look for the previous one in an ascending order. So make sure that this section is sorted ascendingly. So you want to find E1, that is that value up there, and then you find that in the range of column A and the match type is 1, that means it looks for the previous value in an ascending order. The closest previous value in an ascending order. That is, in this case, for point 2, that is point 18. Going back to index, and it found that in row 11 in that range, and in which column do you want to find the value in column 1? This is column 1, that is column 2. We do the same here. The only difference is that you do that this time in column 2. So now we change the 1 into 2. Okay. Then what is the one after? All you have to do is update the match function by adding plus 1. That was the previous value plus 1. Again, in column 1, and the one to the right is going to be in column 2. Okay, done. Now, what we need to do next is, we have to find, if you want an insert here in your chart, we have to find the range, and that is basically three sets of coordinates. We have to take this set of coordinates, that set of coordinates, and that one. So in formula settings, I took the minimum value of column A. There I took the minimum value of column B. And then here is the value we are trying to interpolate. So how do I find the corresponding value that we did not observe? We use the trend function. The trend function puts a linear regression line between the two closest observation points and then calculates what that point would be. The trend function is an array function. It looks in F12 through F13. Yeah. And then the known axes 12 through E13 and the new axis is that point 20. Okay. Don't forget to accept this formula with control shift enter okay. and then put the same formula there and then make sure that when you go to the chart select the data that you add that second series of values add and then take that one and make sure that that is hooked up to E5 for E7 and F5 for F7 and make sure that the line is a straight line. Okay. Now how can we do that in, uh, by the way, if, if I ever change this in point f 4, then everything here should update. Why does the chart not update? Because I didn't hook that up to these coordinates, but to those coordinates. So I'm going to do that here now. 
and this time I'm going to do that with VBA code. Each time I change this number, the machine automatically runs VBA code that creates these values correctly and adds an insert. So if I type point 4 there and I accept it, then it asks me, do you want to create a separate graph? And I say yes. And it creates a new graph on a new sheet and puts that point right there. Bolt F11 takes you to VBA. How did I make that happen? I double clicked on sheet 1. That's the sheet I happen to be on with all my data. And I go to worksheet and then the change event. That means each time I change whatever is in that cell, we are going to run this, otherwise it won't run it. I declare two a series of variables, some of them of the variant type. They can hold whatever you want. But I want to make sure that it only kicks in if I happen to be in E1. So if the target's address is not E1, don't forget the string signs. It's an absolute cell address because this address is defined as absolute. Then exit the sub. Then we are going to set O range, which is of the range type, to the range starting in the second row, column 1, up to the end, cells, range A1, current region, that is everything around that cell. Let me show you that here. So the, this is the current region. It looks for an empty column and an empty row. So make sure that you don't put these formulas in column C for then they become part of the current region. Okay, and we count the number of rows of the current region okay, and set that correctly. If range E1 is greater than, and we try to find the maximum value of column 1 in O range, then exit sub. That means we uh, we cannot do extrapolation. Let's merge cell E1 and F1, and then we store in Vmatch, which is of the variant type, whatever comes out of the worksheet function match for range E1. I'm just using the formulas that I used before. Uh, find it in O range, the first column, and the match function for the last argument says it's in an ascending order. Then V index is the index function based on O range, whatever came out of the match function, one, and then we store in range E2 V index. Then I do that again for the one to the right, F2, worksheet function, but this time we want to make sure that it's in column 2, range index, V index. Then we do that for E3 and F3. We do that again, but this time it is Vmatch plus 1. Remember that is the next one in an ascending order. In column 1, column 2. Then we do the minimum function. Range columns 1. We store that in E6 and e, uh, in E5. And then we store in E6 and E7 the value that you had chosen in cell E1. And then we do the trend function. The trend function gives me this in the range of the, the y's, the axes, the new x. Store that in f5 and f6. Then find the minimum of the y values. And then we ask, do you want a separate graph? If the user says yes, then we go to charting. Charting is a new sub. I put that sub on the same worksheet. That means you can only run it on this sheet. If you want to run it from anywhere, then you have to put it in a module. Uh, that is a little involved one, but basically very simple. You need a set of variables again. Set O range to the current region. Find out how many rows we have. Then set SX which is a string type from the second cell in column 1 to the last cell in column 1 
and take the address of that range, the address of column two. Then we combine those two with a union function, range SX and range SY. We add a new chart. And from now on, we are going to add to talk to that chart, O chart, with a with statement, and we end it with end with. Okay. So we want a smooth scattered XY chart, dot chart type, that means O chart, dot chart type. Set the source data to O range. O range came out of the union function. Make sure it has a title, or if you don't want them, don't make sure. Has major grid lines, has minor grid lines, yes. Then we store in P minimum, the minimum of column 1, the minimum of column 2. And we make the XL value, X is a minimum scale. And this one looks a little complicated. IIF, that's the VBA version of if, if P min 1 is less than P min 2, then take the integer of P min 1, that means it rounds down, otherwise take the integer of P min 2. Make grid lines, give a caption to the chart title, graph based on the columns, etc. As a legend, series collection, number 1. Etc. Then we add an insert to the chart. We talk to O chart series collection new series with a with statement again. So that new series has x values in the range E5 through E7, F5 through F7. Give it the name insert. It's a scatter lines chart, has data labels. Select those data labels for we would like to show the category name in there and the value and size with window or chart. Uh, you, get, you get real values. If you want functions in there, you have to do something like this. The only thing is that doesn't make much sense. So once you have those formulas in there, you don't have to use any macro or VBA code because it will automatically recalculate. So I did not do that. Let me show you how that works. I set this to 0.2. Do you want a separate graph? Yes. And it creates that graph based on columns X and Y for X equals 0.2. And it puts an insert here that calculated through a linear regression between the two closest observation points and puts their values in here. These are the sets of coordinates that we had calculated. Interpolation requires that you know maybe a little more about how to use Excel for science purposes. So I created a book and a CD-ROM, Excel for Scientists, in either in version 2013 or older versions that will be fine too. And this is what it covers. You can find it at genesispc.com. And if you want to know more about VBA, I would recommend this video. These two videos help, have helped thousands of people. The price may seem high, but remember, you can use them for other people. You can give that CD-ROM to other people. They copy it and give it back to you. So you can do it for all the people in your office. I wish you good luck.